Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Cindy Jordan, and I am a academic professor and a pastor with Going Places with Jesus Ministries. So I'm just going to talk a bit about um, when trusting God seems impossible. You know, that's a big topic for us this season in our lives, and that trusting God is not an automatic virtue. For some of us, for some, it's very easy. And for some of us, it's a process. And so I'm going to chat with you just very briefly on what do we do? How do we conceptualize the idea of trusting God, especially in very difficult, challenging situations? And what does the Bible say about that? You know, as a professor, one of the things that I teach some of my students are the idea of developmental psychology. And some great psychologists that are in the field of developmental psychology talks about trust. Uh, we have heard maybe some of you may have heard of Maslow, of Erickson, Piaget. All of these theories talk about the idea of human capacity to build trust, maintain trust, or even gain trust. And so it's a vital part of who we are as human beings to navigate around the idea of trust and not just only in our minds, but in our behavior. And so if trust is broken, according to the psychologists, in our early stages of development, it's gonna be very difficult for us to become involved in trust in relationships or to emote trust or even demonstrate trust in our behaviors. And so according to Erickson, if says that if you grew up in a home or you had very mistrusting relationships in your early development, most likely that's going to follow you throughout the rest of your life, right? And those, those, are, those are some of the claims put forth by these theorists. But what I want you to understand that this is not a conclusive response to the topic of trust. And so while some of us may have experienced very untrusting or insecure relationships, in our childhood, it is not impossible or unheard of to develop trust as an attribute, as a character, and even in the way we think about the idea of trust as a whole. And so that's why we have psychologists and therapy and counseling, but above all of that, that's why we have God. That's why we have our heavenly father, who is the epitome of trust. And so for us to get into the, the the idea and the topic of trust today, we're going to take it back from a human perspective and look at it also from a spiritual perspective as well. And so trusting God can be challenging. Let's just put it out there. Let's just start there. Trusting God can be challenging, but trusting God is not impossible. On a human perspective, trusting and God, trusting people, can be tiring, it can be exhausting, and it can drain some of us. And it can be very complex, and it's interwoven with so many different dynamics, whether it's in our childhood or adolescence, even in our personal um, walk. But when you think about it on a spiritual level, trusting God, hmm, some people, and myself included, have quite a difficult time some at some seasons in my life to trust people. And these are people that I can see and, and feel and, and kind of be able to put a thumb on, uh, on whether or not I should trust them or not. And then how am I supposed to trust a God that I don't even see and believe that he's there and he's existing? Is that even possible? Well, I say it is because I have walked the road and I know many people have walked that road where trusting God is possible. You know, now it's impossible to, at times, trust God when things are not going well, when there's so many unanswered questions, when it seems like there are more enigmas than solved puzzles to our life. When trust is broken by people, by relationships, by folks that we know and we care for, sometimes some of the residue of that spills over in our trusting relationship with God. And I think that's where we make one of 
uh, the most critical decisions in terms of a barrier to trusting God is that we compare our trust with humanity, trusting ourselves and even others as the same with God. And that is one of the things that I want to share with us today, that we can't mirror or measure or parallel rather our trust with God as the same with our human perspective. And so Proverbs 3, 5 tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. Wow. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and don't think about it. Don't understand how I'm doing it. Is that what that scripture is saying? I don't think so. Uh, Solomon, one of the wisest men in the Bible, gave us these recommendations on how to trust God. And I think trusting God, from what I got from the scripture, trusting God requires a disconnect in order to connect. And so what are we disconnecting from? We're disconnecting from a human capacity, our human understanding of what trust may look like in our lives or what we perceive trust should look like. And it's connecting with the spiritual ex explanation of what trust should be. And Solomon is saying that in order for us to really trust God, we got to disconnect our human understanding of trust and connect with a spiritual understanding of trust. And so I don't want us to think that we are blindly or unintentionally or mindlessly trusting God. No, that's not what it is. Actually, trusting God requires all of us. It requires for us to be present. It requires for us to be cognitively planted in the process of trusting God. And so one of the things I want to just share with us or remind us is that when we trust God, we trust God with our hearts. We trust God with our hearts, meaning that we trust God with everything about us, our mind, our spirit, our souls, our emotions. And so if we trust God with all of that, and we realize that he is trustworthy in that, it's it's a little bit more palatable, or I say more easier to trust God in difficult situations. If we trust God with our humanity, it's going to be subject to error because God is bigger and greater, and he is not one to be placed in a box or to be isolated just based on our lived experience. But he is bigger than that, more than our more than our experience that we know it as today. God is able to trust. To, we are able to trust God because we're not just living for today. We're living for an eternal, eternal reward. And that is to be with our heavenly father one day. And so trusting God requires ownership of our limiting, a limiting ability as human beings to trust him altogether. I think when we come with that, that, that approach of, God, I am struggling. I am at a, my wit's end and trust in you. My limits to trust in you is very narrow and short. And I'm asking you if you can help me to trust you more. Understanding our limits, allow God's limitlessness to intervene and to give us the guidance that we need in trusting him even more. 